Hey there, guys. Long time no see. I know I've been absent for, well, it's been over a year now. And it's it's been a really hard year. But that year is come and gone now. And I've honestly never in my life felt more ready than now to really pursue this dream that I've had for years now. So this video that you're about to watch now is just over a year old. I filmed it all, I believe it was in January or February of 2021. And I never did edit it or anything like that until now. Cause I'm just, I'm so ready to get back in, into the game here. So as always, thank you guys all so much for sticking around after all this time. I'm so happy to be back and I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy and Storm Tracing. It's been a while since I've said that. It's been a while since I've had my setup here out too. But thankfully I got some time earlier. I knocked the dust off of it. We have an absolutely beautiful but really cold night here in Middle Tennessee tonight. As you can kind of see right now, there's a couple fair weather clouds floating around up in the sky. But those are quickly, quickly moving out. The only thing that we've got going against us right now, there's a little bit of wind, but it's died down substantially here in about the past hour or so. We're just now getting into the early spring, and that means only one thing. It's galaxy season. Galaxies is one thing that I've had really hit or miss luck with here on the channel, and really my entire astrophotography career. Uh, it's not I want to attempt to shoot Bode's galaxy. Bode's and the cigar galaxies are two objects that has evaded me the entire entire time I've tried astrophotography. I tried them multiple, multiple times with my old setup, the uh, Skywatcher Star Adventure and my Canon 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. I was able to get a couple of decent shots here or there, but nothing, nothing that I could use for stacking. And whenever I first got my HEQ5 set up and my William Optic Z61 here, I managed to pop off one shot the very first night I got the set up and managed to get everything together and kind of figure it out. But that's just one shot. It's not, I want to try. And finally, fingers crossed, but finally get my shot on M81. I think I've got everything dialed in really tight tonight. I went in and I double checked my photo alignment. It seems to be really, really tight. Uh, my focus seems to be really good. Like I said earlier, the wind, the wind's still blowing here just a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to really mess with it. I'm definitely gonna do quite a few test exposures just to make sure I'm not wasting my time tonight. But man, the skies are beautiful here. This is the first time in a few months, really, that I've been out underneath crystal clear skies like this. And this is coming off about a week straight of rain almost here in Middle Tennessee. We actually recorded just over 10 inches of rain just here in this past week. So it's really saturated here right now. So I'll take this crisp clear night while I can. Let's go ahead now and see if we can find Boat's Galaxy. Boat's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, or M81 and M82 respectively, is a target that's always really interested me since I started this hobby. I think what it is is really like, it's two very, very distinct objects that's fairly close together, you know, in the field of view, especially with the wide field setup I have here. 
So far, I'm having pretty good luck, I feel like. I'm doing minute and a half exposures at 3600 ISO apiece. Uh, that's the highest ISO I've used with this camera so far. I usually hover around um, 800 to 1600. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go for 50 images tonight. And uh, like I said, looking at some of the test shots, stars or pinpoint, I would like, like I said, just a, the galaxy's right square in the middle with this a big sea of stars around them. I think that would make for a cool image. All right, my last dark frame is about to finish up right now. Then I'm going to bring the rig in and do my bias and my flat frames. Here you can see I have my white t-shirt. So far, the white t-shirt method has been by far uh, the best method for me anyways to take my flat frames. Uh, they come out pretty well perfect every time. It's hard to beat and it's simple too. And one thing I like to do too, whenever I do these calibration frames here, of course, you know, light frames are going first, uh, dark frames too, because they take up quite a bit of time. But uh, whenever it comes to your bias and flat frames, I always like to do my flat frames immediately after my dark frames. That way, whenever I go and I throw the memory card to the computer and start pulling my images off, you know, you have all your dark frames, and then boom, right there next to your dark frames is your light frames, or your uh, flat frames, excuse me. Um, that way, you know, you can kind of see, you know, you have your lights, your darks, your flats, and then your bias. Because, of course, your bias are going to be pretty dark, too, and they're liable to get mixed in with your dark frames um, as well. So, yeah, I just, I kind of get OCD about stuff like that. But, uh, so far, it's worked out good for me. Maybe it's just a little tip to help some of you guys out down the road. So, that is all of the frames done now so let's go ahead and start shutting this thing down one thing i know that's like really intimidating whenever you first get your first serious deep sky rig is man it's just it's so much to learn and it really is but there are setups and this is one of them i feel like it's just it's easy i can pick this whole thing up and carry it um all it takes is a single extension cord to plug this in runs the entire setup and I'm thinking here before long I'll probably do like a overall video just explaining this rig from top to bottom. But man, I'm just really happy with it. For as easy as it, as it is to use, it performs really well. As everybody says online, astrophotography is a black hole of a hobby. And I believe that wholeheartedly. It's very expensive. But hey, I sure do love it. But I'm going to go ahead now. Start taking this thing down and get ready for bed. Looking forward to editing all these pictures. But that's a battle for another day. And we'll see you guys then. So I've been sitting on this picture of Bowes and the Cigar Galaxy for probably about a year now. And I may have posted to Instagram at some point. I think that I did. But I'm really, really happy to finally get it put in a video. I've worked and edited on this picture for a really, really long time. It, uh, I think it's definitely one of the best uh, galaxy pictures I've ever taken. It's definitely on par with my most recent shot of Andromeda, which is another target that I would like to try again here soon. I've got some ideas kind of floating around. I'm wanting to do some multi-night sessions on the same target and just get so much data that I'm really wanting to push myself in this hobby. It's been quite a ride, and I'm so happy that all of you guys are so interested and watch me continue to change and evolve in this hobby. Hopefully, hopefully, get better at the same time. So, without further ado, here is my, really, I guess one and only shot so far at Bodes and Cigar Galaxy. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Thank you for still hanging on after all this time. And I hope you enjoyed.